nothing like the presence The one who made the blind tonight, Lord, that you are the God of miracles. You are the God that comes and heals us from everything and brings life everlasting. You come and you breathe new life into these lungs we have. You break off everything that needs to be broken off.
give it all to you. Give it all to you, Lord. Sing this with me. How great is our God. Sing with me. Is our God? No, we'll see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God? the name above all names and you are worthy of all this praise tonight <laughs> all of it Lord in my heart will sing how great how great you are
over us that Jesus you are our King and our Lord and that we are nothing without you Holy Spirit come into this room and do what you do best lead and guide us into all truth come and fill us tonight Holy Spirit to overflowing let it come Lord let it come Lord Come, Lord. You good for one more? Or two or three? <laughs> no, it's all good, man. It's all good. I got I got so many songs on here, I don't, I don't know which one to pick, but I'll pick one. And then we'll do the one you were wanting to do in, in the middle, maybe. We'll change it up. I think you might know this one. I don't know where that womb, I think it's in the sub is where that woominess is coming from. Can you hear it? I just don't want it to bother you. Oh, that's why. Okay. Well, that would, whatever, whatever you want to do. I just, I just don't want the woominess to bother anybody. It doesn't bother me. But I do know to say, yeah. want to look in the eyes of the one I love. You guys know this one? You don't know this one? It's got a lot of words in it. Do you have the Do you have the words? It's called Eyes Like Fire. Do you have it back there? Cuz I don't want to sing it if you don't if we don't have the words cuz it's really really wordy. It's called Eyes Like Fire. It's it's in there somewhere. It's in CCLI. I know that. And all that stuff. So while he's finding it, I'll sing it and then when it pops up there, when you guys kind of start mumbling along, I'll know I'll know you have it. I want to look in the eyes of the one I love. our lives.
day, huh? Let's see. You guys are probably going to hate this, but is there any way you can come and sit over in this area? Oh, I don't mean to get you, I don't want to get you in trouble or anything. It's just, you know. <laughs> no, it's just easier just to look in a, in a central area. Because usually the kids over at the side, you got to be like, okay, what are y'all doing over there? <laughs> For those of you that don't know, we uh, we didn't get to share too much this morning about you know where we are from and all that stuff. And <clears throat> I'm from a small town in mid Missouri. Uh, some of you may have heard of it. It's called Sedalia, and uh, yeah, home of the Missouri State Fair. If you've never been, eh, go one time and you'll think, okay, I got it. I got, I, you know, I see the cows and the pigs and, okay, I know what they look like and I think I'm good. But uh, today's about 20,000 and that's where um, my wife and I are mostly from, is that area. And uh, it's, a, uh, it's a Christian community, I guess. Um, nice folks. But... Um, When her and I were growing up, had no real ambition to to do a lot. Being from a small town, um, how big is Independence? About ten, about nine or ten. Yeah, and today is about nineteen, twenty, so om- almost double, but not quite. So it's still pretty small, you know, compared to Kansas City, where I live now, where there's two point four million people. Yeah, I live in Lee Summit now. It's like 95,000 people, you know. And, uh, but, you know, problems are problems and people are people. And whether it's a small town or a big city, people are still hurting and need Jesus. And uh, we needed Jesus. And I grew up um, in, I guess, a Pentecostal charismatic family. And um, my parents traveled around and did stuff. But other than that, and my wife grew up on a farm. Her parents still own the farm. It's uh, They live on 600 acres, and then they have another big acreage down the road. So they've got a lot of land. And uh, she grew up there, and a uh, pig farm and all that kind of stuff. But when I was growing up, you know, I didn't have a lot of ambition or drive to do a whole lot. Um, I played sports a lot. Mostly, believe it or not, I played soccer. I don't know why, I just didn't. Well, thank you. Thank you. Glad y'all came tonight. I'll be here tomorrow night. No, I did. I didn't even know what soccer was. Um, I just had so much energy, and all I had at home was a football. And uh, I would kick that thing around, and I, 
I was dribbling, but I didn't know I was dribbling. I was just kicking it around and, and shooting, and I didn't even know what soccer was. And so my mom put me in soccer at six, five or six years old, and I played all the way through my teen years, and I played um, for Pepsi, you know, the Pepsi drink. I played for them, and we traveled and had our own uniforms, and they had to call, and I played for them. I was really fast. Not as fast today. I would hurt myself if I tried to run that fast. But uh, I really liked soccer, and I was actually pretty good at it, obviously, to be able to travel and play for Pepsi. I was pretty good. But there was always something uh, nagging inside that wasn't, that, uh, like I said, I just didn't have a lot of ambition and a lot of drive to do a lot of things. And so I learned very quickly how to just shut off the voice of God. And um, through my years of high school, did some activities, extracurricular activities, that made it to where I couldn't play sports anymore. And uh, took me on a little bit of a downward spiral for a while, doing some stuff. You can imagine what that was. So I thought, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to default back to see if I can sing with the choir. Because I hadn't sung since you know, I was little. You know, I didn't. I never sang all the way through anything until I was uh, my sophomore year of high school. I started singing. But you know what? I you know why I really started singing? The girls were pretty, and I thought, you know what? There's a lot better looking girls in the choir than there are on the soccer field. A bunch of ugly guys on the soccer field. So I figured, well, I'll do this because this is this is a little more fun. But that little, that little launching pad is what started the singing career on through. And I told you this morning that um, if you were here, or I mean if you weren't here, that worship leading and being in the ministry was the number one thing I was never, ever going to do. I had no interest in it at all. I had no interest in really serving God. I didn't mind believing in Him, didn't mind living for Him a little bit, as long as it didn't take up too much of my time. And uh, But as far as being in ministry, not a chance. I, my parents are in ministry. I'm a PK. It's a pastor's kid. My, my uncles, my aunts, they're all pastors. And uh, not that any of you guys in here are like this, but I saw how mean people were in the church uh, to my, my family. And I said, I'm never going through that because people are, are, well, they were mean. And said horrible things and just did stuff. And I, the reason I know that is because I saw it on my parents' faces and my family's faces. And I could hear it in the background of what so-and-so said and what so-and-so did and all that kind of stuff. And you always think your kids aren't listening, but they are. And they're always observing. And so um, I listened and I observed and said, never, God, never. I'll never lead worship, ever. And now I'm sitting here with you in Independence, Kansas, leading worship after doing it for 23 years. 23 years of my life's work. <laughs> kind of funny, huh? So, um, the wife and I got married in 93, and she's right here. Why don't you come on up here, hot? Come on up here, hot mama. Hi. This is Lori. This is hot mama. We got married in 93, and uh, eventually, I mean, pretty close after that, we started going to Smithton Community Church, and then you heard the story this morning of uh, not wanting to do it, not wanting to do any music, and just got thrown into it. And it's amazing, and I want to encourage all of you, it's amazing what God will do, and God will do with you, and God will do with me, and God will do with us if we surrender our lives totally to him and are not afraid. I think a lot of us think that, uh, and I grew up this way a little bit, and I know you did too. When we grew up, it was a lot of, you want to sit down? You want a chair? You sure look sweet standing there, but you want, might want a chair. Chivalry is alive, guys. Chivalry is alive. Yeah. But when we were growing up, in the decade of the 80s, believe it or not, 
Yes, there was a decade of the 80s. Yes, they were real. And yes, we lived in them. By the way, by the way, early 80s from about 83 up to about 88, best hard rock metal years ever. <clears throat> That's my thing. So when we grew up in church, it was very, very fear-based. Very fear-based. Biggest, biggest fear that they threw at us was, do you know where you'd go if you died today? And uh, I was thinking, um, I hope I don't. Chances are good I'm going to wake up in the morning, so what do I do then? Another big thing they used to tell us is, do you remember this one? You might leave here tonight and a bus run over you. Yeah. I'm not kidding. That was a huge one for, for the preachers and the evangelists. Of, do you know where you'd go tonight if you walked out of this church and a bus ran over you? And I was like, well, I think I learned to look both ways, so I don't think I'm going to get run over by a bus, right? Another big one was the rapture. Have you heard of the rapture before? It's when Jesus blows this or the angel blows this trumpet and somehow we all magically fly through the air, through the ceiling, and we all just disappear, you know? Freaked out this 13-year-old kid. I mean, like scared the crud out of me. So out of that, and there's a, there's a lot more of the things. There were those movies, Thief in the Night. Wish we'd all been ready. Larry Norman. It's a good song. It's a real movie. It's called Thief in the Night. It's from 77. It's real cheesy. And everybody just disappeared. They don't know where anybody went. And they figure out God came back. And some of them didn't make it. You know? Now, if you're, if you're an adult, you're like, okay. But, man, if you're a teenager and they're telling you that if you die, what's going to happen? If you get hit by a bus, what's going to happen? If we have a nuclear war which was big in the mid-80s. You know, they're always talking about Russia might nuke us, you know. What's going to happen? If you die, I mean, if, if Jesus comes back and you don't go flying through the air with everybody else and you're stuck here, you're going to have to take the mark of the beast or get your head chopped off. Those, I'm, and some of you are like, what? I've never heard any of this. Well, stick around pastor long enough. He'll, he'll tell you the story. He'll fill you in. But there's this mark thing in there that says if you don't get that, you, you, you die, basically. So we had all these things going on in, in our lives, and everything about God was fear. You better do this, or this is going to happen, or else. And I'm like, what kind of a relationship? I didn't say what kind of a God is that. But it does make you ask that, doesn't it? What kind of God is that? That all he wanted to do was punish me, hurt me, kill me, or make me fly through the air. And so it took years for me and for her, too, to get that kind of mentality out. And thank God we've got good, theologically sound worship songs now that say, you are good. We didn't say that much back then. Back then. The only time we ever said it is you had to say the repeat. God is good all the time. God is good. Now, was, that was it, guys. Don't go any further. Don't get excited. Because that was all the further it went right there. All the time. All the time, God is good. And that was it. And so this fear-based thing would rise up in me and in, in us to where it was like, God, are you really who you say you are? Do you really do the stuff that, you, that we read about in the Bible? Do you really do that stuff or not? And he proved himself right to me. And he proved himself right to her. And there's a scripture in the Bible where Jesus says, you know, if you ask your kid, if your kid asks you for something, are you going to trick them and give them something else? In other words, if they ask for bread... And you trick him and you give him a snake instead. That's the context. That's what he said. And he said, of course not. Why would your, basically, why would your heavenly father do any different? And that's what, that's what God revealed to me. That's what God revealed to us. Is that I come confidently to him with not that kind of fear anymore. I reverence him because he's God. I fear him because of who he is. But I don't fear him because of what he may do to me. 
And there's a difference. And when you grow up in a home or no home, parent, no parent, dad, no dad, mom, no mom, it can cause you to question, who is this God? And what's he really have for me? And you begin to see that actually he is the rescuer. He rescues and he pulls you out. And presents himself as the Almighty. The Almighty God that comes to save. As a matter of fact, that's one of my songs. You are the God that comes to save. And so that's why I worship the way that I worship. That's why I write the songs that I write, the way that I write them. I write them a little bit different than everybody else because I don't want to sound like everybody else. I don't sound like everybody else, and I don't want to. I want to sound like me, and I want you to sound like you. When you get up here to speak and you share what God's doing in your life, we want you to sound like you. Because that's what God did. He made you, you. And man, when we get that fear out of us that, man, God's not going to squash me if I screw up here. He's going to love me and He's going to pull me back in and He's going to lavish me with His goodness and who He is. Man, it changed everything about me. And it changed everything about her. And it changed the way that I worshipped. And I didn't worship out of fear that, well, if I don't worship right, God's going to be mad at me. And I got so sick of that mentality of God being mad at me, God being mad at me. i got to prove myself to God. i got to prove myself to God. I don't have to prove anything to God. Jesus already proved everything that needed to be proven when he died and was raised from the dead. Everything's been proven already. All I have to be is the best I can be and be what I've been called to be. And you know what? If I miss it along the way a little bit, that's fine. There's something for that. It's called the blood of Christ. And it washes it. And through that, he will strengthen me to be all I've been called to be. And through that, I will be strengthened not to do and not to be who I used to be. Because I don't want to be that. But He will strengthen us. The Bible says from strength to strength. And it also says from glory to glory. Which means His goodness and His glory will continually pour over and over and over in us. So I'm going to let Lori just share just a couple minutes. What's on her heart? Well, there's our little dog. She's got one of our dogs as a screen. We're dog people. Sorry. My dog, my dog, my, my uh, oldest daughter, uh, her and her husband live with us at the moment, and uh, which is fine. She, she'll live there forever if she, you know, but that's whatever. They have one cat. It's a nice cat. It's actually a nice cat. It's the nicest cat I've ever met. You know, most cats are, have a little bit of demon in them where they'll, you know, you'll, you'll pet them for a second. You'll pet them for a second, and then all of a sudden they'll, they'll look at you like, excuse me. You know, and then they'll, you know, and they'll just turn on you. But this one doesn't. This one doesn't. He is, he, she is a really sweet cat. But we got four dogs. Four. We've got a, a boxer. Yeah. We got a Great Dane. Yeah, her name is Stella. And she's as tall as those chairs. She's, she is huge. And then we've got, well, Brownie, he's kind of, he's really half here. He, he's kind of um, he's kind of almost on his way up the ladder to heaven. You know what I'm saying? He's really not all there. He's blind and he can't see and he runs into stuff. Yeah, diabetes. poor guy. I did, he's got diabetes. I just can't do it, guys. I cannot take him and and give him the shot. I just can't do it yet. So just call me old softy. And then we've got the picture on here. We got our little mini Schnauzer. His name's Hank. <laughs> Hank the dog. So what what did you want to share for a couple of minutes? We're just sharing from our hearts tonight. Is that okay? Yeah. Is that good? All right. I just wanted to encourage you a little bit. Um, I want to encourage you, number one, to bloom where you're planted. People need you to be who God called you to be right where you are. You're not where you are by accident. You may think sometimes, how did I get here? What in the world am I doing here? 
but you are not where you are by accident. God has a plan for where you are. There's people you need to touch where you are. What if each one of us touched one person? I call it the ripple effect. You touch one, and then those people touch one, and it just goes out. You will never know how much your changed life will mean to people. And so let your life be an example. You know, some people are not going to want to accept that you've changed. They're just not. And that's okay. They're just not there. But you need to just let your life be an example. I think that's one of the first things that we learned once I was saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. I grew up in a Baptist church. I was saved for a long time. My grandpa was the song leader there and I loved church and I was there every time the doors were open but when the Holy Spirit when I was filled with the Holy Spirit that's when I really felt like I came to life you know and so um, of course my life was totally changed and different and um, my family goes mostly to the Methodist church now and my sister still goes to the Baptist church and they all love God and that's our it's, Catholic. and our brother-in-law is Catholic so it's beautiful we all we all love the Lord but it's neat when you can let your life be a, the example and when real big needs come up they'll come to you to pray but but if they can't accept that you've changed right now it's okay just the biggest thing that's going to help you is if you refuse to become offended no matter what people say okay I learned that lesson I learned that lesson and so when somebody says something and it could be kind of cutting to you you just smile back at him and just bless him anyway love him anyway that is a big example to people when you can just do that I you know sometimes I just I said I'm gonna pretend like they didn't say that Eric I'm just gonna treat them like they didn't do that and I'm just gonna love them yeah. when I see him I'm gonna give him the biggest hug like the like yeah right? yeah exactly so so just if you adopt that, just refuse to become offended. That will help you. You know, we are called to love, and love keeps no count of wrongs, right? And that's in Scripture, so, so do that. And then um, I just want to tell you one more thing. Uh, God wants to take you to a place where the circumstances in your life may not change, but everything can change because it has to do with your response okay so let's I have been in some very tumultuous situations and I just I worried about it and I fretted about it and did that do me any good no no but when you finally give everything over to the Lord those things yeah they can still be going on around you but everything your your view on it can be different and you can have his grace to carry to carry you through so you don't it, you look at it different and you can go the next day without being worried you know just your confidence in him that's where your confidence needs to be is in the Lord and the last thing I want to share is just I want everyone just to dare to dream again I don't care where you are in life or what you have done is your dream to have a family is your dream to do something great for God? Dare to dream, guys. You can do it. You can do anything. You and God are a dynamic duo. And you can do anything with him in your life. And so when you get in situations that seem that there's no way out, just remember, I love that song we sang this morning. We said, what a wonderful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. What a powerful name it is. And not only is it powerful, guys, the name of Jesus is the name above all names. It's the most powerful word you could ever say. So please, just, just remember that. And when you don't know what else to do, and if you feel like you're sinking, just cry out to him. Because I promise you this, he will never leave you. He will never leave you. If you feel far from God, it's not because he's gone somewhere, guys. So just we're just glad to be here with you all and excited about what God's going to do mm -hmm. through this place, through each of you. There are big plans here, and we just can't wait to watch them unfold. Good. Good. The reason that... Don't make you sing? Okay. Uh, 
But one of the reasons why she said the things that she said is because that's what we've lived. This is what we do all the time, is we learn the hard way to not get offended. And we learn the hard way that when you don't know what else to do, which is a lot of uh, the time, the only thing you can do is, is say his name. That's, that's, all you, that's, your, that's what we have. He's given us that strength and that ability to cry out to him when we need it and say his name, Jesus. Right? When there's circumstances you can't change and things you can't change and things you can change, but you don't know how to change them. You fall on your face before Almighty God and you say His name. You say Jesus. And He'll come to the rescue. He will come and save you and help you. He's helped us many times. Many times more than we can count. So the, what, what was a? You wanted me to sing what song was it? If I remember the words. Okay. Yes, I wrote it, but that doesn't mean I remember it. That happens a lot. Um, I'll share one more song with you, and then and then we'll kind of finish up. But I'm gonna. Um, I think I told you this morning. I'm working on a new a new CD project, and this is um, this is one of them that'll be on it. I have no idea if I remember the words because I haven't. I haven't obviously. I haven't recorded it yet, and I haven't sung this in. Um, long time you, yeah you can sit wherever you want all right easy honey easy easy in front of the in front of the children we don't want to by the way that's one of the funnest things for us to do as grown adults now who have grown kids is to gross out our kids as much as possible it is fun. It was more fun when they were teenagers because you got, you know, you got the, uh, the total, ooh, that's gross, all that stuff, but now they just roll their eyes. And that's not as fun as the, ooh, gross, stop it, get a room, all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, I do. I still do it. I, I goose her right in front of the kids. And not just a little one. Uh, it's not in. Oh no, it's not in here, honey. All right. Uh, oh, sheesh. Just put me on the spot here. <laughs> oh. I've been touched by the very hand of God. He's changed my life, and I am not the same.
remember when I wrote that? Yeah. Wow, really? It was a spontaneous song. I wrote it in five minutes, one time through, straight through. Just what you heard is how it came out. I wrote it on paper. Yeah, and I ran out that night and I said, I wrote a new song last night and it goes like this. You know, that's how I used to do it. I'd just write them real fast and I'd run out and I said, I wrote a new song, goes like this. You know. What time do you guys normally end? About now? Oh, we went an hour and a half, so uh, you... 6.30. Oh, it, we, it was 6.30, wasn't it? I was thinking 6. Okay. You, uh, I, what? What? <laughs> 12 o'clock? Four hours later. Why don't you sit down? Why don't you sit down? We'll go, we'll go just a couple more minutes, and then we'll go. We drove all this way, right? We may as well make it right and make it really good for you, the best that we can. But I do, I do want to encourage you, in, um, obviously, in your worship, um, that, again, worship is, is so powerful. It's a God-given gift that he's given us through this thing called music. And uh, it's a powerful thing. And uh, I've, been, um, I've been playing guitar since I was 12, 13 years old. You know, and I'm 40, am I 49 now? 49 now. That's a long, I know, I don't look at it. I look a little younger. Yeah, I'm going to be a grandpa two times this year. So that's awesome. Yeah! I get to give them candy and send them home. Payback. Payback. This is going to be so fun. This is going to be so fun because my kids are going to say, Dad, I'm so sorry I did that to you. But I've been playing guitar my, pretty much my whole life. And I do play piano, too. I just don't. I just don't. But anyway, no, that's okay. But this thing called worship and music that God has given us is, is so powerful. And, and here's why. is because when we leave here tonight, you know, we'll all go our separate ways and we're not going to be together, right? The worship goes with you. Wherever you go, just like the Word of God goes with you, wherever you go, and the Bible talks about that there's a scripture that a lot of people actually, they, they misquote it, but that's okay, they're, they're trying. But it says that the, the misquote is that God will never put on you more than you can bear. And that's actually misquoted, that's not actually what it means. It means he will not actually tempt you beyond what you can bear. But after that, it gives us the answer. Because... He always gives a way of escape. And worship to me, and it's not just because I'm a musician, but, um, but just because of what he's done, is that worship is the escape. It, worship can take you places with God that even just a, a good message can't do. Because messages, sermons get in our heart and we do what they say, right? But worship encompasses every piece of fiber within us because it's this thing called music and you walk with it and you can have it at work, you can have it while you're going to sleep at night, you can have it getting up in the morning. And when it resounds in you, it changes you. And so, therefore, you know, I don't like to ever... So, don't take this as corrective. It's more of just good advice, I guess. Watch what kind of music you put in your ears. Right? Because I know I used to play it all. The worship... I mean, music has an attitude. And sometimes it's a good attitude, and sometimes it's a raunchy attitude. And uh, if it's, you know, I, I, tend to, I have a tendency to like real aggressive, 
very fast, very aggressive, loud, fast, and thrashing. All right? That's just what I like. But that being said, I can't allow myself to go and listen to that. And here's why. It interrupts the spirit flow between what God has done and what he will do with old ways and old patterns and attitudes. Because if I go back and I listen to old Metallica, which I used to love, and I can play it. I can play it. I would play it right now for you, but I won't because it's just it wouldn't be appropriate to do that. But I can play it right now. I can play all those songs. Some of you would know the names if I said them. I can play them. But I don't because this is an instrument that's set apart for God's use only. And that's just the way I look at it. But it doesn't mean I don't thrash a little while. You know, I, don't, I still play. But that being said, we just got to watch what we put in our ears. And if we, if we go back and listen to the old stuff that we used to really like, but it, it attributes to a different kind of lifestyle or something else of a different person that we used to be, then... God is it's a real God has a real hard time getting back in there. So that's why you got to keep worship at the forefront and music at the forefront that's glorifying to him, right? And glorifying to Jesus and then glorifying to you. So I hope that didn't kind of want to come across as like, you know, dad's telling us don't listen to bad music. But you can listen to whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. But well, that's true, you can't. I know you don't. I know you don't. But it's not just the hard stuff. It's the, um, some of the rap and stuff, too. It's all genres of music that are not spirit-inspired. It can go or it can go into... You who? Oh, redeem songs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you save them. Yeah. Well, yeah. You save it. Yeah, you can save songs. You can put new words to them. Because the beat's usually good. But we just watch what we put in our ears, right? Especially if it reminds you of old ways and old past things. Which for me, it does. It reminds me of the bars and how I used to play them. And I'd thrash my head back and forth. I, you know those weird old headbangers, you know? That was me. I know it's hard to imagine, but it was. You can ask my wife. She was there. <laughs> she was there. We started dating when I was 18. So I was just a kid. Yeah, just a kid. Just a kid. I came back from Disney World. I sang at Disney World. And, uh, yeah, I was at Disney World, believe it or not, and sang for Mickey Mouse and all those guys. And we came back, and that, that day I got back is the day I met her. And I was like, who's that you know and so we've been together ever since but I have apologized countless times haven't I I still apologize for pulling her into that um, scene the the band the rock and roll scene and when they say it is what it is it is what it is sex drugs rock and roll it's it's bad and it's bad and it's bad and I pulled her into that, and I'm like, I am so sorry. You know, I'm so sorry I did that. But uh, so I can't listen to those, all those songs anymore. I just can't because I can't live in two kingdoms. Amen. I can't live in the kingdom of light and the kingdom of what used to be dark for me. I have to make a choice and a decision of living in the kingdom of light, and it'll save you. It'll save me, and that's your way of escape. So if one of those old songs come on and you're like, nah, all you got to do is go click. <laughs> and then you go, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> and just start saying his name real fast. And he'll, he'll come running to the red. I'm here. I'm here. Don't listen to it. I'm here. Have you ever felt like Jesus has done that to you before? When you said his name and he just like sprints to you. Oh, man. Thank you, Jesus, for sprinting to us. Oh, man. Thank you, Jesus. Well, God, we thank you for this time together tonight. Thank you we could come together and just talk and share and from our hearts, and then we could worship you. And we're so thankful, God, for who you are 
And we're so thankful for what you have done for us and what you're continuing to do, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's end with, let's end with this song tonight as you're going out. All right? of any